Tonight's intrigued me because it has to do with one of those small, thoughtless acts that all of us are all too often guilty of, and yet, as small as it is, could cause such havoc. Helen, a wife, tells it on herself. She writes, Dear Loretta, why can't we women let sleeping dogs lie? Is it our pride? Or is it our sense of intrigue? Or is it that we just want our husbands to acknowledge 24 hours a day what a prize they got when they married us? I don't know the answer, but maybe you or someone in your audience might, if I tell you what happened to me. I was all unsuspecting of my motive when one night I cut a clipping out of the paper before my husband sat down to enjoy it, as he does every night after dinner. Helen. Helen? Helen, where are you? Coming right in, dear. Well, how you doing, Grandpa? Won 12,000 so far this week. Good. Do you call me Stan? Do me a favor, baby. Mm -hmm. Wait till I finish reading the paper before you start cutting out recipes, huh? Oh, uh, it wasn't a recipe. It was a story about someone I used to date. A man. Well, that figures. But why did you have to cut it out? Well, for my memory book. Memory book? Well, sure, you know. Old dance programs and dead flowers. Memory stuff. As a matter of fact, I... Now, I don't want this to upset you, dear, but I could have married him. Oh, of course I didn't. Grandpa? You listen to the morning news. Did you ever hear of a newscaster called Jerry Worth? You don't say. Oh, I've heard Worth a few times. Why? Oh, he's the one I'm talking about, Stan. The story in the paper, the man I used to know. So? Well, oh, so. He's only the hottest thing in broadcasting today, that's all. And he has won every single magazine and newspaper popularity poll this year. And the women, ah, oh, they're just mad about him. Who's this you're talking about, Helen? Oh, this radio newscaster, Jerry Worth. Well, now, that's nice. Yeah. He's an old friend of mine, Grant. I was just telling Stan here I could have married him. Well, you did, didn't you? Oh, no. I could have married Jerry instead of Stan. Well, I hate to quit when I'm ahead of myself, but it's time for me to hit the hay. Oh, here. I'll help you. Thanks. Sleep tight. I aim to. Mm -hmm. Good night, Stan. Good night, Grandpa. Any chance you taking me fishing this week? Yeah, I think so. Well, now, that's more like it. Good night, Cordelia. <laughs> Good night, dear. Oh, dear. You know, sometimes I think the old man's getting senile. Did you notice he calls you Cordelia? Ah, uh, senile like a fox. I've taken special notice of that Cordelia business. He calls me by mother's name only when he's pleased with me. All the rest of the time. He knows my name all right. He's a great old man. <laughs> yeah. And he's the happiest, spoiledest character in town. That's what he is. Whew. Spoiling evens out. Hmm? Six months of it here, then six months with your sister. Stan, I... Now, don't get on your high horse. I'm not criticizing Margaret. She's a swell girl. But she's admitted herself that Grandpa's a great responsibility to her. I know. That's why I'll give you odds. The old man would rather stay with us all the time instead of bouncing around like a baseball from Tinker to Evers to Chance. <laughs> You're dating yourself, darling. I'm simply quoting your grandfather. Yeah. Say, look at that. He's been using half of our canasta deck. So how about it? Like to take a beating? Mm, yeah, I guess we don't play all night. No, we'll only play one game. Tray over there, will you, dear? There we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, grab this. No, I won't. Say that every night. Well, that's better. Final score, 6,500 to 3,000. Mm. Looks 
like I'm going to have to give you a handicap this game, baby. No, you don't. Helen. Hmm? Why don't we ask him to stay here permanently? Who? Grandpa. There's no reason he has to go back to Margaret's, is there? Mm. Then it's all settled. Oh, that's sweet of you, Stan. I like that old boy. <laughs> Your play. No, it's yours I dealt. And I'm warning you, if you get four more red trays, I'm going to blow my top. Stop grousing. You losing cards, so you're lucky in love. That reminds me. That clipping of Jerry. Oh, great. You know, I was going to show it to you again, then I forgot all about it. To my desk, I'll get it. Relax, sweetheart. Play your cards. I'll take your word for it. Oh, but that's not the point, Stan. Okay, what is the point? Well, honestly, I don't understand you. Here, Jerry has become a national figure almost overnight. And I used to know him. But I didn't. Well, do you have to know him to be interested in someone I almost marry? That's a good question. And the answer is yes. This seems to strike you as a big joke. And that's a very strange reaction for you to have, it seems to me. Well, what do you want me to do? Kill myself? I'm going upstairs and read. I thought you wanted to play canasta. Well, one game is enough. Are you coming up? We're not going to play cards. I'll finish my paper. All right. Good night, Stan. Good night. Extra good coffee this morning, Helen. Don't you think so, Grandpa? Seems to me like it's extra noisy. Well, this is the television age, Grandpa. Even the donuts are wired for sound. Television. Well, we ought to get one. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. And then we can watch the football games and the fights. And newscasts. Uh, well, I gotta run. Excuse me. Yeah. Clip anything you want to, dear. I'm through with it. There'll be no cutting up of that paper till I'm through with it. All right, Grandpa. I need it to wrap my fish in. I'll keep it for you. Do you think it'll ever catch on? The fragrance of perch in your memory book? Suddenly, I was mad. I might have married another man. I might never even have known Stan. And he acted as though he didn't care. And finally... He blew his top. Grandpa, hmm. put your crawler down for a minute. There. Shucks, there ain't no call to be careful of this shirt, Helen. These are my fishing togs. I know. Now, ain't you taking me down to the pier this morning? Why, well, sure. Just as soon as I get these breakfast things cleared up. You're looking mighty pretty this morning, Cordelia. Oh, you. It's been a sight of days since I seen you not John at Stan. You two all through fighting now? We weren't fighting, Grandpa. Stan's upset me, that's all. I just don't understand his attitude about Jerry Worth. Kind of silly arguing about somebody you don't even know, seems like. But I know Jerry very well. Good heavens, I get the whole trouble. Stan's just furious because I could have married a famous man. Now, anyway, it's ridiculous to go on talking about it anymore. I'm tired of this bickering. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to tell Stan to forget the whole thing, to forget I ever even mentioned Jerry Worth. Hmm? <laughs> Good morning, Stan. Good morning. Good morning, Grandpa. Good morning, Stan. Fine day for fishing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, fine. What is it? Well, Stanley, this you could answer a civil question. Let me see. Hello? Hi, Helen, it's Sally. Oh. Seen the morning paper? No, not yet. Why? Well, take 
just sitting down. Because this is going to floor you. Your boyfriend's plastered all over page one. Uh, Sally, I'll call you back. There's a picture of him, too, Helen. Oh, you were sure right about the charm. The boy's loaded. And listen to this fabulous article. Oh, wait a sec. Drop the paper. Hold on. First time in my life I wished a man would be struck deep. Listen to this, Helen. A committee of prominent city and state officials, headed by Mayor Turner, will be at the airport... Stan, I've been thinking over what you asked me the other day about me staying here and living with you and Helen. And you know something? I'm a going to do it. I figure I could take over the gardening chores and keep you in fish. I'm glad, I'm glad, but later. Well, you've seen it. I've done my best. That's just great. Have you told everybody in town that you're going to marry Jerry Worth? Now, Stanley. I ask you a question. I want to know if I'm the laughing stock of the entire city. I'm not going to talk to you until you stop acting childish. Childish? Yes. You deliberately hid that article about Jerry. Do you call that being adult? There's your article. Go ahead, read it. Memorize it. Frame it for all I care. And when you call Sally to repeat this to her, you can quote me as saying, I'm beginning to wish you had married Jerry Worth. Stanley, on you, my bag does not look good. You simmering down some, getting over your mad at Stan? way he acted. <laughs> I think I committed a major crime because I told Sally about Jerry Worth. And you know, it's perfectly normal for a woman to be proud that a famous man loved her. And it'd be just as normal if I went down to the hotel to see Jerry. You know, the more I think of it, the more convinced I am that it's the proper thing to do. It'd be kind of rude of me if I didn't, don't you think? Up to now, I've been keeping my nose in my own side of the trough. But so help me, Hannah, if I catch you going down to that there hotel... You're not going to catch me, Grandpa. Well, that's more like it. Well, I'm off to market. Sorry I'm late. Were you worried? I've been too excited to worry. Oh, you had a good day, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll say you did. You think that's good? You ought to have been here 30, 40 minutes ago. Why? What happened? Oh, I hooked one about uh, so long. You did? Never seen a fish fight harder. He was slapping the water mad as sin. <gasps> I got a good look at him, fresh in the way he done. Shiny brown scales with flecks of red glistening through. Of course, I know there ain't no trout here. But if that wasn't a German brown, I'll eat my shirt. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry you lost him, Grant. We used to catch German browns back home. Call them the fish that wears tweed suits. Brown and red, tweed suits. You get it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. About 10, 12 pounds, I'd say. Oh, Grant, make that ounces and I'll buy it. Come on. Not them. The one that got away. And I come within that of him. <sighs> that feller could fight. Like I said, he was about uh, so long. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Grandpa. Don't forget your box. What's Stan doing in the den? Checking the bank statements, he said. But he's still mad from this morning. Couldn't you tell at dinner time? Can't say as I did. He seemed right interested about my German brown. Why don't you call him to come in here? 
He'll come in when he's ready. I like my new hat. Looks like a big flower garden. Sure don't look like no hat. Oh, Grant. We're supposed to be a surprise, or aren't we speaking? We're speaking. Oh, well, how do you like it? Well, I suppose we could always live in it if we should lose the house. Stan, I'm willing to forget about this morning if you are. Oh, we shouldn't be quarreling about Jerry Worth. After all, I hadn't even met you when Jerry proposed. Yes, sir, Stan. Just like I told you. Never heard of one in these waters in my life. But I'm a monkey's uncle if that fish didn't look like a German brown and it got away. Grandpa, that's not polite. I was talking, and you deliberately changed the subject. I never done nothing of the kind. <laughs> Yes, madam, I'll give Mr. Worth your message. Thank you. Women, nothing but women crowding in here all afternoon. You don't want a lock of his hair, do you? All I want is a few moments of Mr. Worth's time. Have you got an appointment? I have no appointment. He'll see me. Oh, you dreamer. Look, mister, no one gets to see him. This place is a madhouse. Women straining in and out, the telephone ringing every five minutes. <laughs> There I go, opening up my big mouth again. Goodbye, huh? His tux? No, no, just press it, that's all. Yeah, and have it back at five. Bye. Jerry! Oh, Jerry. Well? Oh. Jerry. Oh, uh, how nice to see you again. It's been so long. Indeed it has. Yes. Yes, it certainly has. Uh, oh, the last time we saw each other... Oh, Jerry, you were so unhappy. Remember? Oh, how could I possibly forget? Uh, I was wearing that green dress. Oh, uh, green. Uh, I'm living on a time schedule this trip. Forgive me uh, for running off like this. It was great to see you again. Well, say hello to everybody for me, won't you? Goodbye. queen on a red king. You get too technical about it, you take all the fun out of the game. Dear Grandpa, you didn't drink it at dinner, so you can drink it now. You're going to be a permanent member of this family, and I'm going to take good care of you. Anything I can get you while you're up? You oughtn't to serve this stuff without a chaser. Uh, is anything wrong? That dress you're wearing, is it new? Yeah. Funny, I could swear I've seen it before. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it unusual for you to wear a new dress when we're not going out? Well, I had it on this afternoon and didn't have time to change it when I got home. Oh, where were you today? Oh, what is this, a third degree? Just interested. Oh. Well, I, um, I went to have my nails done, see, don't they look nice? And then I did some shopping. Why? Well, I thought you might have gone to that luncheon for your friend. The one the foreign correspondents gave for him today. Now, why would they invite me, for heaven's sake? I, I'm not in the newspaper business. <laughs> but your friend Jerry is. I haven't even heard from Jerry. You know, if you're such good friends, I wonder why he hasn't tried to reach you. You're implying that I've been lying about Jerry, and that's not true. For your information, everything I said is true, and even more so. Why, Jerry asked me to marry him at least a dozen times, and if you don't believe it, you can ask any of the girls that I used to know back home. You know, come to think of it, that fish could have weighed as much as 20 pounds. Grandpa! Well, it could, if it is a German brown like I think. I was reading up on it today, and it said where a feller caught one once weighed 39 and a half pounds. Oh, Grandpa! How much longer are we going to have to hear about the one that got away? 
That's just what I've been a wondering. Would you mind repeating what you just said? I ain't repeating nothing. That's what's the trouble around here, repeating. We're too bad as much of it. It's downright monotonous. Monotonous? <sighs> How long did you plan to keep this up, Grandpa? I don't know what you're talking about, Cordelia. Well, oh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You lovable old fraud, you. Oh, Stanley. Remember me? Vaguely. Oh, a couple of years ago, I could have married you. And come to think of it, I did, didn't I? I... Oh, Stanley, come here. There's something I just got to tell you. Stan? I went to the Hotel Villette today. I know it. I... You know it? I saw you there. You said... Sa... You mean you saw me in the hall with Jerry? I sure did. Oh, Stan. Oh, wasn't it awful? Oh, sweetheart, it wasn't that bad. Oh, it was. I... That was a phony brush off if I ever saw one. He must have been real gone on you to hold a grudge like that. It just goes to show you that even a big man can have a small mind. See that you remember that. Oh, Stanley. You're just wonderful. Oh, come on. How could you love such an idiot? It's easy. It's not a bit hard to do once I've made up my mind to it. Oh. <laughs> it's just like I always said. It's the one you catch makes the best chowder every time. <laughs> Good night, Tilly. Good night, Good night Grandpa. Grandpa. I've often wondered, too, why women do things like that. I got my first jolt when I was about 15. I was crazy about a boy who lived down the street from us, and at the time, I was proudly wearing his class ring. Well... One evening, while we were sitting on my front porch to stir up a little excitement, I guess, I decided to tell him that I didn't want to wear his ring anymore. And then he'd plead with me, and finally, after many sweet words of persuasion from him, I'd agree to make him happy again by continuing to wear his ring. So, full of confidence, I said, Arthur, I don't want to wear your ring anymore. And while I waited for the pleading to begin, he was taking a long look at me. And finally, he said, all right, and he took the ring, and he walked off the front porch, and I've never seen him since. <laughs> I've never forgotten that young boy, because I learned a very important lesson through him. Don't drum up dramatic situations for yourself. Life is full enough of real ones with which you'll have to cope. Save your strength for them. At least I think that's what I learned. Perhaps the real answer to this should come from a man. Now, how about Socrates? After all, he's been dead so many years, we couldn't possibly argue with him. And Socrates said, Women! <laughs> Good night. See you next week.